If you're looking for a kind of convincing liquid container that doesn't require much setup, this is the effect for you. I made the first tutorial for this shader over four and a half years ago, but I made a few improvements to the original recently, so I figured it's worth making a video today. The effect is done with a shader and a C sharp script, and it creates the illusion of a volume and wobbles when you move or rotate it. You can find the URP shader graph file, built in shader code file, and the C sharp script linked in the description. The script will feed these three values to the shader, one for the fill position and two for the movement on the X and Z axis. So let's go over how this shader works. For clarity I've just added a gradient texture to the base color so you can see both sides of the mesh. And first up we're going to use the fill position to create a cutoff point for the alpha. Moving the liquid level up and down should move the alpha clipping value but we don't want it to stay local when we rotate the container, so we have to use world space positions here. So here we take the world position and subtract the object position. So we have a world space coordinate, but it still moves with the liquid container. And then we subtract the fill position from script, and the y value of this will be used as the alpha. The more the container will move, the more rotation will apply. We can preset a 90 degree rotation and add it in based on the velocity. So we rotate the world space fill position using rotate about axis nodes, once for the x axis and once for the z axis. These values are then multiplied by the floats that come from the C sharp script. The rotations are added together and then added to the world space fill position. That's the vertex part done. To prevent some node spaghetti, I've added a new block to the vertex input for this value so we can reuse it later as a custom interpolator. We can set up the texture to move with the fill level. Use the Y value of the custom interpolator as the UV for a gradient texture. To give the illusion of a volume, add a solid color to the back faces so it looks like there is a flat top even when you look from above. Using an is front face node and a branch, we can see which faces are front or back and give them a different color. To have some secondary movement when the liquid moves a lot, add a sine wave to the fill position. Let's say you have a square container. The x value of fill position is the frequency for one side and the z value of fill position is the frequency for the other side. The intensity then comes from how much it moves. So build the sine wave using the fill position custom interpolator x and z values added together, add some time for a moving wave, and base the intensity on the wobble x and wobble z values from script added together. Add a little highlight line by finding the overlap between two step cutoff points. The pink arrow going up is the alpha cutoff we made, the blue arrow going down is an inverted version with slightly bigger values. With these two values, you can find the overlap where the highlight will appear. So here we have a cutoff point going down presented as a smooth step. It's a smooth step so we can have a fading gradient line if we want by increasing this smoothness value. Multiply it by the alpha cutoff going up to find the overlap and then multiply it with a color for tinting. Finally, add in a nice glowing rim light effect by using the Fresnel node and multiplying with a color. In the C-sharp script, we calculate the velocity and the angular velocity of the transform and use that to control the rotation in the shader. The velocities get added to a float for both the X and Z axis. And these floats decrease over time and get multiplied with a sine wave. Then we send this value to the shader. And this will be underscore wobble x and underscore wobble z we saw in the shader graph. And the fill position is also set by the script. It is based on the center of the mesh bounds in world space. And then we subtract the transform position and the fill amount slider that we set in the inspector. And this will be the factor 3 fill amount that we used in the shader. You could use a scene color node to make the liquid look transparent and then add in the world space normals for a bit of distortion. But this doesn't always look good from all angles, so I didn't actually add it into the graph. But if you want to try it, here's what the node setup looks like. 
And that's how the fake liquid effect works. To set it up you just need to go to the link in the description, take the shader graph and the script, or the shader code for built-in, and make a material for your liquid. Then add the liquid script and adjust it. It's set to execute in edit mode so it should work right away. And there are some example settings in the linked post. And if you want more tutorials like this, check out my GitHub page that has links to all of my tutorials about all sorts of game dev topics. Finally, a huge thank you to my supporters on Patreon who make these tutorials possible. Thanks for watching, have fun and see you in the next one.